let's get inside. It's all ice. It's a minefield. <laughs> my, my atoms are cold. <laughs> so, are you old enough to know about the planes, the B-52s that used to fly 24-7 around the world? Yeah, basically to uh, make sure that we didn't get caught in a first strike nuclear attack by the Soviet Union. We flew B-52s around the globe 24-7, armed with nuclear weapons, uh, just in case of attack. And we just met uh, a retired Air Force pilot who flew one of those B-52s. Um, I mean, talk about living history. Yeah, that's pretty cool It was stuff. pretty cool to meet him. Really? Wonderful displays. But this one is a device for measuring the neutron flux of a uranium core. This one is assembly for determining critical mass. This is really cool. So, th so this device where you see it's like a copper ball was the bottom half of the disassembled physics pro uh, package of the Trinity device, which was detonated just south of Albuquerque and White Sands. The First Atomic Test On Monday morning, July 16, 1945, the world was changed forever when the first atomic bomb was tested in an isolated area of the New Mexico desert. Conducted in the final month of World War II by the top-secret Manhattan Engineer District, this test was codenamed Trinity. The Trinity test took place on the Alamogordo Bombing and Gunnery Range, about 230 miles south of the Manhattan Project's headquarters at Los Alamos, New Mexico. Today, this 3,200 square mile range, partially located in the desolate Hornada del Muerto Valley, is named the White Sands Missile Range, and is actively used for non-nuclear weapons testing. So, this one's a little boy, and that one is Fat Man. This was a broken arrow. If that's the one Steve Austin crashed in in the six million dollar man. <laughs> so Steve Austin possibly crashed in this one and oh, became yeah, the six million dollar man. <laughs> they crack me up how they like have the bombs on them. This one was for Operation. Dominic, 1967. They're funny. Is that one for Red Wing? How they have the exploded bombs on them. A participation certificate for Operation Hardtack. Oh. No, I don't want to go in there. It's got uh, commie territory. Don't be stupid, silly American. We go watch movie, no? <laughs> Vodka is means water in Russia. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh my God! Look at this room. It's amazing. <laughs> Even above you. you could shoot and it had a low yielding nuclear uh, warhead on it. This did? Yeah. See it? The Davy Crockett. So they called them handheld nukes? Well, they 
it enabled the infantry to uh, carry nukes. I mean, they weren't handheld, but oh, okay. they were pretty mobile. You could mount it on a Jeep. That's awesome. Skyger counter you could buy from Sears Robot Company in Chicago, Illinois. <laughs> For those of you who don't remember, that's actually Sears. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get one. <laughs> okay, so what is this? It's a Geiger counter and a watch. Survey meter and dosimeter. I wonder how or much do you pronounce it? Dosimeter. Dosimeter. So I wonder how much something like that costs. I would imagine that's pretty expensive. The, the band on it, uh -huh. I can tell by looking at it, it's uh, solid titanium. What are these pins with the civil defense symbol on them? They're, um, you put in your pocket and I think you would know if you're exposed. So they're only, they're like, they're not reusable once you're exposed. You have to throw away the pin and yeah, then Yeah, they're go, meters. Yeah, then go get your ass scrubbed in the decontamination. Yeah, clip-on meters. These are the kind I would have to wear. Actually, this one in the middle. Looks like the one I used to have to wear when I was on military bases. Damn, you're old. Cleaning up this stuff. It was similar to that, but I'm sure that's older. I mean, what's weird is look at that watch. That was made in 1979. Yeah. Okay. That looks like something that was made today. Well, when I used to have to clean up the ra uh, the old radium dials from the airplanes on the military bases, because the paint was um, the glow in the dark paint that was on the dials uh, for the airplanes was. Painted with radium. Um, matter of fact, the Rosie the Riveters that would um, paint those on would lick the brush and then dip it in the paint and then paint it on. So they would lick it so it'd be really fine. And they all died of cancer and their grave sites are considered nuclear waste and you can't go near them. So this is actually being used. So what is... <laughs> Fiesta wear. <laughs> Fiesta wear. I told you Fiesta wear. Let's see. Let's see. That's pretty hot. Okay. Look at that pegged out. Okay. So when I was going through hazmat training back in the day, they used to tell, they told us that the older Fiesta wear was radioactive. And this is old Fiesta wear. If you're not familiar with it, it's the, the old kind of Hispanic looking. Now watch when it goes by the Gaga counter. Okay, well this is even scarier. These are the old mantles off a of Coleman lantern. Are they? Yes, they are. I can't tell you how many times those have crumbled in my hand uh, over the years. Okay, so now the Fiesta wear is going through. That totally pegs it out. And now the old mantles from a Coleman lantern is not as strong, but, it's, but it is pretty dang high. Okay, so this is the Coleman mantle going by. And this is the Fiesta wear. It totally pegs it. <laughs> oh my God. So this is some food that is has naturally occurring radiation. So uh, salt substitute, uh, cow bone, um, Brazilian nuts are really high. It says Brazilian nuts are the world's most radioactive food. Um, they have a high radium concentration. Um, some have as much as a thousand times more radium than the average food. Brazilian nuts. Those are in their shells. Um, kitty litter. Um, is that because of the bentonite? Most kitty litter is made from clay, that, which is bentonite, uh, from clay that acts as an absorbent. Since clay typically contains elevated levels of naturally occurring um, radio nuclide, um, large amounts of kitty litter can be measure, uh, measurably radioactive. Taster's choice, baby. Taster's choice, instant coffee. Think about that when you make Kahlua. Using radium heat, canned milk. Oh my God.
And that is an awesome Fishing lures right from 1930s to 19, uh, 1920s to 1930s. Sensodyne toothpaste uses potassium nitrate. It works. Check it it out. works by calming the nerves of the tooth, which prevent the transmitting of painful stimuli. And then Fiesta Wear, of course, is I knew about that. Radiated glass. I Radiated think they glass. did it intentionally. Well, it was the color. They were going for the color. Um, so for the red, they used uranium oxide yeah. in the glaze. Yeah. So in Moab, you could buy uranium jewelry <laughs> back in the day. I think they actually have it in the gift shop here. Um, so, Moab, Moab Uranium Necklace, the uranium capital of the world, I did not know that about Mo, uh, Moab, was home of some of the most famous uranium mines in the United States. Visitors could take home souvenir jewelry fashion um, from small pieces of uranium. Wow. This one is a radium pull chain for your lantern. That was in uh, 1905. Oh. But yeah, if you've got old Fiesta wear that was handed down to you, um, you know, you need to be careful. So, or if you bought it in an antique store. So, New Mexico and Albuquerque area are so connected with um, the nuclear age that a lot of their teams are named after things that have to do with the nuclear age, the atomic bowl, uh, the isotopes is their um, local um, minor league baseball team, um, you know. Couldn't go to school without the Biohaz lunchbox. Oh, I'll gotta have that Biohaz lunchbox when you go, go to school. The isotopes lunchbox, wow. <laughs> so this is basically when the Cold War ended is when the wall came down in Germany. And what was really neat about this is I was taking a geography class uh, by a woman, that, a professor from Germany. And when we got the announcement, the news came over, I was actually in class and she somebody came in to tell her that the wall was coming down and we turned on the TV and she started crying. We all did. It was kind of an amazing moment. Um, so people of my age, this was a pivotal moment because we have lived in fear for many, many years and it was a symbolic moment for us. What are these? These are actual... These uh, are your fail safes for your, your bomb. Um, you'll see one over here in use. Like the two key thing? <clears throat> Like you, yeah. one person had a key and the other person had the key type thing? Kinda, it's more code. So, so like this is? There's one connected. So, so it's actually connected? Is, yeah, as you would activate it to go live, uh -huh. probably with a code. And then uh, you would load it and it'd be ready to go. You'd disconnect your key and take it away and it's a hot nuclear device. That's some James Bond shit, last minute. Deactivating the bomb type yeah, equipment. Man, didn't, didn't you see uh, Armageddon where the guy's trying to program the nuclear weapon? You know? oh, let's go outside where they actually have full fledged planes. Ooh. They've got B 52 out They do have B 52. Oh my god, it's a submarine. That's an actual submarine that's not a real submarine, but. It might be buried out there, you never know. <laughs> That would probably be a B-29, and that would be if they dropped the uh, first atom bomb one. This place is amazing. So this is the actual mock-up, well, it's a mock-up of the Trinity bomb that was dropped.
Lassiter. <gasps> oh my goodness. And a DeLorean. <laughs> Actually put on the vest and be Marty McFly. Okay. Here he comes. <laughs> All right, so the DM the DMC stands for DeLorean Motor Car. Uh-huh. Great car. It was heavy but underpowered. And uh, it had a factory problem. It tended to ride the white line. <laughs> because DeLorean was... Arrested for cocaine. Was arrested for cocaine. That was the end of his uh, car company. <laughs> An old joke, but I still laugh at it. <laughs> kind of humorous but sad, but there's like full-on plates for Three Mile Island. A nuclear plant. Um, a kit that you could build one um, a lamp for Three Mile Island um, for those of you that don't know what Three Mile Island is but it's America's version of a nuclear meltdown almost so okay so this is pretty funny how to prospect uranium how to use a Geiger counter use a strike your own claim get valuable low-cost maps and use black light, get free assay. What it doesn't tell you is what to do with uranium and radiation poisoning. Yeah, exactly. Uranium game. So yeah. you 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 were you're a prospector. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're successful by the uh, time the game's over, you've enriched your uranium into a nuclear weapon. <laughs> <laughs> Ages 5 to 12. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so the nuclear museum, that was awesome. I just like had so much fun there. Um, I got my Doctor Who coffee mug where you fill it up with the heat, heat of a drink and the TARDIS <laughs> disappears and then it appears on the other side in the, what, the universe. How cool is that? It's pretty cool. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I love the outdoor part. Uh, the B fifty two B was cool. Um, I like the mock up I, of the tower for the Trinity site. That uh, was awesome. It was it was cold outside today, so I kind of froze my atoms it, off. It's twenty six degrees outside, and it was freaking cold out where all the airplanes were. So we didn't get to spend as much time out there as we wanted to because. My hands were getting numb. I just like was taking so many pictures I couldn't put my gloves on. So. Well, my molecules move slower in the cold, so. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? No. So, the Atomic Museum? Definitely a visit. Thumbs up. It's a cool place. That's how cold it is right now in Albuquerque. That's off our license plate, and you can still even see the, the numbers of our license plate in there.